Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be taking a close look at the 2023 Cadillac CT5V. And the question I'd like to answer is, is this special enough considering that there's a 5V Blackwing that exists? And if so, why is that? So we're going to take a deep dive around the car. We are going to take it for a drive, answer that question. Let's get to it. So here we are on the interior of the Cadillac. And you know what I love is that this has really become a driver centric car. I think when people think of Cadillacs, they still have it in their minds, you know, with those 70s, 60s, 70s and 80s Cadillacs where everything was just a big boat and, you know, a bench seat up front and that whole thing. No, not anymore. I mean, everything is really sort of tight, hugging the driver. Everything's aimed just right. You've got a good driving position. Um, this particular car has the carbon fiber trim throughout, which I think is a really, really nice touch. It does a couple of things, but mostly it reminds you that though this has luxury, it does still have sporty intentions at its heart. And I think that's important. Um, I like that the screen is angled a little bit. So that way you don't get glare as a driver. The screens have a nice layout. The switch gear is really, really good. I mean, it feels, um, it feels like it's like made with like metal, you know, behind it, <laughs> almost like there's like gears and cranks and stuff. So they feel like they're going to last a long time. And I'm really pleased with that. Um, the leather appointments here on the dash, on the doors, that all feels good. Of course, like all manufacturers, the lower you go on the door, the material quality goes down. Uh, but that's okay, you can forgive it for all that stuff because again, for the price point, this is a, a really nice package. Um, my particular spec does not have a sunroof, but you can get that. And ultimately you got, you know, a good balance of tech, nice field of vision and um, what I call the, the greenhouse. And I mean, it's, it's great. So for whatever uh, you're looking for as a driver, you're gonna be able to find it in this car. So here's what's interesting about this CT5, which is when it came out a couple of years ago, this gauge cluster was actually still analog with a screen in the middle. And quite frankly, it got a lot of criticism because, well, it, at this price point, its competitors already had this digital kind of cluster. Uh, so I'm really pleased to say that, you know, I think Cadillac saw the opportunity to make a change. They didn't hesitate and they made the change. So here we go. This is the starting um, screen. And as you can tell, you do get um, some information, just the basic stuff you would typically expect. Nothing uh, crazy here, um, which is great. And that's for like everyday normal driving stuff. Now, when you really want to turn things up, go into V mode. The whole cluster changes. And of course, you know, now you've got, um, you know, different uh, telemetry in front of you. You can also, you know, kind of customize this to your liking. Also, there's the different modes as well. So you can go into, this is like your customizable mode. There's snow and ice, there's track, which you probably shouldn't use on the road, and then sport. Um, and that gives you, the right uh, mode to drive in, in terms of stability and traction control, while still having all the elements of the V 
uh, present on uh, in your driving configuration. And as you can see here on the center screen, a couple of changes here too, uh, which I believe is new for this year. The two knobs that normally would be here, um, which was volume and tuning, are now gone because they were very redundant and honestly, kind of not not adding to the aesthetic of the interior. But here you can see you've got a touch screen, which is pretty responsive. You do have a video recorder if you have the um, SD card, which by the way, you load into the trunk, which is an interesting placement for that. Uh, one thing I do notice too is no matter how many times I clean it, like it gets really, really dusty really easily. Not really sure why that's the case. Maybe it's just got electromagnetism and it attracts dust, but uh, just something to be cautious of. Other than that, I mean, you know, look, the, the screens are nice. I think they work really well on the vehicle. And uh, I'm glad that um, Cadillac made the adjustments to make this interior sort of meet the price point. And they've done a good job. So let's talk a little bit about how this car drives. The initial impression on this Canyon Road is a good one. And a couple months ago, I got the opportunity to drive the 23 CT4V Blackwing, which is the top trim of the CT4 class. And that was amazing over here. I mean, it really impressed me, uh, mostly because I think the size of the vehicle was right. The weight was pretty good. That uh, magnetic ride control was just dialed in uh, and a good tire. And much of that same recipe is alive and well in this CT5V as well. So we do get Michelin PS4 tires. We do get uh, the same uh, version four magnetic ride shocks. And man, I gotta tell you, the, even the drive modes and stuff that are built into this for sport, wet, track, all that good stuff, seem to be relatively well thought out. Um, this is a big car and it's just in, impressive to me that out here on this pretty windy technical road, which I like to drive my cars on, this really long vehicle, that's what it's like, it's really long, seems to be just fine at home. I mean, it's tucked. That back end stays planted unless you want it out. The front end doesn't move at all. It just, you know, you turn the wheel and it goes. And that's how a sports sedan really should behave. But it's just amazing when you think about, you know, this is a car that is really designed for, you know, full size, large family, real comfortable five seater. And yet this thing can do miles, it could do a back road. And I'm starting to believe it could do a track day. Woo. Um, yeah, that, that sounds pretty good. Um, I don't know if that gets picked up that well on camera, but I will say a couple things about it. The exhaust on V mode does have some pretty nice tones to it and it does get pretty loud, which is great. But this exhaust is silent unless you're on throttle. So why is that sort of good or bad? I mean, it's subjective, right? For my taste, I, I don't know, like, I like, a, I, I like an exhaust system to kind of make the car feel like it's got a different personality. It, it, I just like rowdy cars, I guess. So for me, this exhaust isn't enough. Um, and I don't know if there's an aftermarket for Cadillacs, but what I can say is when you are on throttle and it does bark, it sounds pretty good. Um, the CT4 V Blackwing that I tested over a couple months ago did have a more throaty exhaust I found, like, an, and it had some more burbles on the overrun. This car, not so much. Um, you do get a crack or a pop here and there, but in general, it's civilized. And I think that's also um, not just the way it was programmed, but it, it's really leaning towards its market segment, which is, again, more luxury car that can do the track versus a track car that has some luxury. 
So let's talk a little bit about the steering. So right now I am in V mode, which for the last few days, I've been finding myself just going to V mode pretty much instantly because the steering feels so good in V mode. I mean, you get uh, a very just well uh, balanced, well weighted steering feel and it doesn't feel uh, fabricated. It just, it's just, just right. Subsequently though, when you're not in V mode and you're just in like a regular mode, like just default or whatever, the steering feels a little vague. Um, just odd weightings at odd times, top dead centers a little bit, uh, just a, a dead man zone. So really, you know, that, that bothers me because guess what? For the average person, they're not going to be putting this thing in V mode all the time when they buy it. They're just going to be like, okay, I'm going to get in and go drive it. And so 99% of the time, that's the experience they're going to have in this car. And that's just kind of sad because the capabilities and the programming of the steering in V mode are excellent. So the hero of this story really is the suspension. I mean, good Lord, this, look at this, this big car handles these curves no problem. And I'm not kidding you when I say like, it feels like to me, like you could have a full car and, and these magnetic shocks don't care. Like they're just about providing the right balance of sport and comfort and they're soaking up everything. They almost make this feel like the road has actually just been paved and it hasn't. This is, I mean, it's okay paving, but like there's definitely bumps and, um, well, some holes here and there, potholes and stuff. But no, this feels great. I'm really impressed with the suspension. Cadillac engineers have done a great job there. The CT5V is an interesting car, but you've probably noticed that I haven't really spoken much about the power plant, which is a twin turbo three liter V6 producing 360 horsepower and 405 foot pounds of torque, which on paper, those are good numbers and really do move this car pretty well. But at this price point, which is 55 to 70 grand, there are other options that have bespoke motors or are just better performers like the Audi S6 or the BMW 340i, just to name a couple. So that's my issue with this car is that this motor really isn't bespoke and doesn't really offer that much life for this car. It's really just almost feels like a gap filler in the Cadillac lineup. And I think that because they've spent so much time making V a thing associated with performance, to me, this feels like a little bit of a letdown. The saving grace though, is that this is the better family car, I believe, from all the competitors, regardless of price, based on the size and practicality. So there lies the rub. Which car better fits your life? All right, so that concludes our drive and review of the Cadillac CT5V. And, you know, look, at the end of the day, I measure cars on the experience and also how well they fit into your life. That being said, look at the size of this thing. It is one of the most elongated, enormous cars on the road today. That's not a wagon, right? Um, and what I can say is because of the size here, it is very practical, especially because if you need to put child seats in the back, no problem. If you need to carry adults in the back, no problem. Very sizable trunk as well. And so for all those reasons, you'd be hard pressed to find a reason why this car can't fit into your life. However, that being said, from a performance standpoint, despite the size, this car handles great. Tons of torque. It felt really good on curves. I mean, it handles so well. And I really enjoyed my time driving this thing. But uh, a couple little things. One, I don't think these seats work for this car because they're just, they're just not supportive enough. Um, I think that if you're gonna spec it, definitely go for the better seats. Um, I don't think white does it for me, and, I, and please don't be that guy that buys a black Cadillac. Go get a car with color, because this car deserves it. Now, again, if that performance is not enough for you, you could up your way to the Blackwing version and even get a manual. And that sounds great, 
Uh, but here's what I would say is, that car is a totally different driving experience because the motor becomes a V8. And by the way, it's a ton more powerful in every way, shape or form, but it's also twice the price. This car as spec here comes in at about 54 grand, which is mind boggling for the amount of reliability, fuel efficiency, performance, practicality, and honestly, really nice design. I, I, this car got a lot of looks all week long everywhere I drove it. I don't know if those looks are always good or bad, but you know, it doesn't blend in. So I personally like that. Now, all that being said, guys, I can tell you, I recommend the car. I think these are great. I think Cadillac is doing a great job building quality vehicles these days. And I would like to see more manuals in the lineup because ultimately that's how you feel the most connected. But that's just me. All that being said, guys, if you have any questions or comments, please put them down below. As always, please like, share, and subscribe. I hate asking, but quite frankly, we're up against the algorithm. And if you guys don't do those things, then my channel doesn't get picked up and it gets harder and harder to keep creating content for you guys. On top of that, I want to be able to deliver the kinds of content you guys want. So the only way we can do that is by interacting. So let me know what you guys want to see next. And like always, guys, I'll catch you on the next one.